Hi, thank you for coming. Um, so uh, Jean asked me to talk to you a little bit about uh, modeling uh, ALS using human pluripotent stem cells. Um, so uh, ALS is an adult onset uh, yeah, new, uh, motor neuron disease. It's a neurodegenerative disease. It has progressive motor neuron death. Uh, so here, uh, ALSA is amyotrophic, meaning atrophy of the muscle fibers, and lateral sclerosis, meaning hardening of the anterior and the lateral corticospinal tracts. So, so ALS sometimes is re referred to as Lou Gehrig disease, uh, after the famous American baseball player Lou Gehrig, who died from it in 1941. And some of the uh, initial symptoms of uh, ALS include weakness uh, of muscle and uh, twitching and cramping of muscles. And then gradually, patients might start to have thick speech and difficult uh, in projecting the voice. In, in the advanced uh, stages of uh, the disease, uh, the patients start to have shortness of breath, difficulty in breath, breathing, and the swallowing. And then ultimately, uh, they will need permanent uh, ventilation support and uh, actually um, many people die within three to five years of diagnosis although actually some uh, may survive for uh, for years beyond that and but uh, generally um, all, all of the patients will have uh, muscle weakness and uh, eventually uh, paralysis so although we talk about a lot about uh, the muscle symptoms of the patients this is actually a motor neuron disease. Basically, motor neurons are the victim of this disease. And so as uh, shown here, this is uh, the spinal cord that has the motor neurons, and it inner, uh, these motor neurons innervate the muscles, and the, the muscle symptoms come from the loss of innervation from the uh, motor neurons. Um, <laughs> Of course. Too fast. <laughs> okay. Flash that really quickly and then we'll ask what it said. <laughs> so apparently the um, pathogenesis of ALS is actually very complex. Um, what we have known um, are some of something like uh, there are um, there are basically two forms of ALS, the familial form and the, the sporadic form. And ninety percent of the cases are sporadic. Uh, actually, it's very it's even uh, even harder for us to study. So people focus more on the familial form, and uh, they have found uh, several uh, genes that has mutations in these patients. The most prevalent one, uh, that gene, is called SOD1. SOD1 is uh, uh, copper zinc superoxide dismutase. Uh, this gene encodes uh, for that protein, and uh, this is a 153 uh, residue protein and there are more than a hundred mutations that can be linked to this disease. For example, it's actually, the mutation is actually everywhere. And all of the mutations are, are actually point mutations, meaning just the one, uh, one base change cause uh, an amino acid change and then cause the disease. So based on all of this knowledge, uh, scientists have made transgenic um, mice or uh, rats to study the, the disease. Um, and they have found several, uh, really several, uh, making uh, a lot of progress. For example, they found that uh, this is a non-cell autonomous disease. Um, this means that although we just said that motor neurons are actually the victim of the disease, it's actually motor neurons probably are not the ones that cause themselves to die. Uh, it's actually another cell type called astrocytes. Uh, which uh, usually act to support uh, the neurons uh, that actually kill the, those cells. So it's start to be more uh, complicated. It's like a murder mystery, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and then I think nowadays, nowadays uh, people, although uh, motor neurons still people focus more, focus a lot on motor neurons, and they start to uh, focus, start to focus to to study uh, astrocytes because they want to figure out how astrocytes can really uh, cause the, the effect. And so based on the animal, on the animal model studies, um, people have some results, but still animal models, um, although can um, have some uh, disease phenotype of ALS, they cannot fully recapitulate the disease in human. 
Uh, so a very good complementary method is to use human embryonic stem cells or in use of prepotent stem cells, uh, uh, which uh, that approach our lab has the uh, absolute uh, expertise on those. So, um, so we decided to use those cells and to uh, be able to pursue a more effective therapy uh, for to cure to eventually cure this disease. And we have collected uh, a list of uh, fibroblasts from ALS patients, and this includes uh, familial patients and uh, sporadic patients. And uh, we also have made several lines from this uh, fibroblasts of the patients. Uh, for example, we have uh, listed here two, uh, uh, two familial cases. We have several uh, clones from each that we've made, the iPS cells. We also have uh, two lines uh, that are we we made from sporadic ALS uh, that are not listed here. So with this material, so, uh, I'm showing you here um, the, uh, the marker expression of the prepotent stem cell, the iPS cells. Um, for example, these markers are really the typical markers for iPS cells that are expressed in the ALS patient iPS lines. And also after differentiation, we were able to make these cells to become neural lineage specific cells. And these are the markers for the neural lineage. Uh, we also, in one of the lines, we also uh, sequenced the, the, the genome and found, identified the mutation uh, for the ISOD1 mutation. For example, here, we, we have uh, four lines derived from this patient. Uh, for example, here, if you um, you can see, there are, um, most of the other um, bases are like only one peak. F um, for this one that I have this red arrow here, you see two peaks. So this one peak um, represents the uh, the normal one, which is the uh, the C cytosine, and the other one is which in color it should be green. Is actually the mutation. So the mutation from cytosine to adenine uh, cause uh, an amino acid change from um, N to K. And that is the uh, reason that uh, the ISOD1 uh, protein function differently and then therefore causing this uh, disease ALS. So what we are doing now is trying to use a genetic method called the, uh, gene targeting. It's basically like a scissor, like a, like, which we call it like a genetic scissor to cut this to replace the bad one, like this A here, with a normal one, with a C. So to make sure both uh, chromosomes are C. And then, so that we can, we therefore just uh, cure the patient at the genetic level. And um, also, of course, this genetic, this disease model provides like a really a nice uh, tool for us to to compare with the um, with to compare the disease the cell line with the normal cell line and to find out the disease mechanism, and uh, of course eventually our goal is to do the uh, replacement therapy to finally cure the patient. So therefore, uh, basically our uh, on ongoing research and our future research plans would be uh, to uh, create more disease models using the um, using patient um, samples and then to call, to make IPS and then perform genetic repair in these patients and uh, to uh, generate uh, neural lineage uh, uh, specific cells uh, for uh, disease study. And uh, like Jean just mentioned that uh, our, our project on ALS actually can be easily extended to uh, other disease, other basically other uh, genetic diseases, um, so that because we can do the basically the gene replacement therapy.